Hey friends, Alan Lee here with The Handyman Journey and today I wanted to answer the question, what should I charge for a ceiling fan replacement job? Okay, and the answer to this is, it depends on your business. I'm gonna get a little bit into it. I'm gonna be uh, referring a lot to the Handyman Pricing Handbook. This is a book that if you haven't checked out, you definitely need to check out right now. Um, I will put a link in the description below where you can purchase this book on Amazon. It is a great book. Again, it's called the Handyman Pricing Handbook. And really our, our whole equation for figuring out what our pricing needs to be comes from this handbook here. This handbook is full of great information of, how to charge, should you charge by the hour, should you charge by the job, and how to figure out what your, uh, what your rates need to be as a handyman. So first off, I wanted to get into it. You know, a lot of people would say, I could replace a ceiling fan in 30 minutes. So I feel horrible, I feel like a horrible human being for charging whatever it is, say $150, $200 for 30 minutes of work. I just feel horrible for doing that and I can't personally do that. Okay. I want to change your mind a little bit. Uh, it's very important whenever you're talking about pricing anything, you need to figure out what your hourly rate needs to be. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to charge by the hour, I'm telling you to charge by the job. But at the end of the day, every single thing that you need to do uh, needs to come down to an hourly rate, an hourly need of what your business needs per hour to survive and actually make a profit. Very important to know this number and know it well so that you can charge accordingly on every job that you got to. At the end of the day, right? You could say, well, I could charge, a I could replace a ceiling fan in 30 minutes. Okay, well, what about driving to the job? What about filling up your vehicle? What about stopping at Home Depot and picking up materials? What about cleaning up the job? What about taking the old ceiling fan to the dump? There's all these things that you need to think about that really go beyond that 30 minute ceiling fan replacement job when you're actually on premises replacing that ceiling fan. So we're gonna dig a little bit into that today and figure out how to figure out what your hourly rate needs to be because what you charge to replace a ceiling fan or replace anything for that matter is dependent on you and your business needs. So the first thing that you need to do uh, coming from the Handyman Pricing Handbook is figure out what your hourly rate needs to be. And to start, the step one for all of that is to write out all of your expenses. All of your business expenses, if you are a sole proprietor, all of your personal expenses as well. If you're a sole proprietor and you are the sole provider for your family, you need to write in things like mortgage, electricity, groceries, what it costs you to survive. If you are something like an LLC or an S Corp and you're paying yourself a salary, then the salary is gonna cover all of that personal expenses. But when you write out your expenses, you're gonna write out fuel, truck payments, shop payments, uh, liability insurance, um, business license, every single thing that is an expense to you and salaries obviously for yourself and your employees all go into the expense category. Then the next thing that you're gonna do is figure out how many hours per month you actually are working. So build hours that you're actually working out there in the field. If you only wanna work 40 hours a month, then plug that number in. The number that I wrote uh, for this example here in the Handyman Pricing Handbook is 128 hours per month. That is the typical hours per month that one man works you know, with holidays and, and days off and you know, weekends and things like that, 128 hours. So you're going to want to take your total expenses. Let's say for this example, our total expenses are $5,000. $5,000 per month are what our expenses is. We're gonna divide that by the hours uh, worked in a month. So you're gonna divide 5,000 by 128 hours. And you're gonna get an hour, if you're following along, you're gonna get an hourly rate of $39.06. Now this is your break even number. So there are three numbers here and we're gonna break those down here. You have your hourly need, you have your break even number, and then you have your 20% profit number, which is what I call it, okay? so. The number that we figured out just now is thirty-nine dollars and six cents. That is your hourly need. Now, this is the this is the charge that you need to charge your client in order just to just to you know not even make any money, just to cover your costs, right? And then in this equation, I add twenty percent to that number to find what I call my break-even number. Now, this covers anything like incidentals, things like that, just to make sure that we are fully on the up and up. The break-even is you add twenty percent to that $5,000 original expense number. So if your original expense number is $5,000, add 20% of that, which is $1,000, add that to that, that can become, now your new expense number is $6,000. You're gonna take that $6,000 and divide that by the same 128 hours 
in that month that you're going to work. And then you come up with uh, $46.88. This is your break even number. This is the lowest number that you want to possibly charge per hour that you are out doing the job. Now, you may even still lose money if you charge this break even number, but this is the lowest number that you possibly want to charge. I recommend adding 20 more percent to that number for profit. So, if you take 20% of $6,000, that's $1,200. That's, uh, $1, so, you add that, your new expense, your inflated expense number, uh, which is inflated by 20% and then 20 more percent, is now $7,200. Divide that now by your average hours per month of 128, and you now get $56.25. Now, this is really what you want to be charging the client. So every single hour that you are out on the job, out in the field, you want to charge $56.25. Now, this is obviously just an arbitrary number that I pulled out of thin air. Every single business needs to go through this, uh, go through this um, system for, their, for themselves and figure out exactly what their expenses need to be. But it is very, very, very important to know exactly what you need to charge per hour. Another thing that you need to look at that's also covered in this handbook is the efficiency rule. Most handyman, most service people are about 80% efficient. So if you're out there for eight hours in a day, say you have eight hours in a day, you're gonna typically get about six hours worth of work done maybe even five hours worth of, worth of work done because you gotta stop for lunch, you gotta stop and go to the bathroom, you gotta stop, you know, get a tool out of your truck, you gotta clean stuff up, you gotta, you know, go to Home Depot. There's all these things, you gotta fill up with gas. There's all these things that, that you do during the day that you don't really think about. So when you are figuring out what your hourly rate needs to be and how many hours that you actually work in a day, you wanna take that 80% efficiency rule into play. So you're not gonna have an eight hour day you know, you're not going to have 40 hours in a week that are billed hours, although those are clocked hours, you're actually going to have 80% of that 40 hours per week. So that is why, that's how we came up with that 128 hours um, in an average month is based on that 60, on the 80% rule of, you know, six to five hours per day that you're actually getting work done. So it's very important. So Someone in California might need to charge, you know, $160 to replace a ceiling fan because they are out on that job for an hour. Even though they do it in a half hour, takes them, you know, the rest of the half hour to drive there, clean stuff up, this and that. They're out for about an hour, um, you know, per ceiling fan, right? Same with kitchen faucets. If it takes them about an hour to do it, you charge about an hourly rate. Uh, you don't tell the client, hey, this is my hourly rate. You just tell them straight up for a ceiling fan, it's going to be $150 or whatever it is, whatever your number needs to be. Someone in Minnesota might be able to charge $56 to replace a ceiling fan. So that's why answering this question is, is hard based on where you're located and what your particular uh, business expenses are. So I would recommend you start with your hourly rate when you're charging for, say, a ceiling fan. We're going to stick with that for this video. If you are charging for a ceiling fan, charge one hour's worth of work for that ceiling fan. Start there and then adjust as needed. If it takes you a little bit longer, charge a little bit more. If it takes you a little bit less, charge a little less. If you feel like you should charge less, charge less. If you can charge more because maybe, uh, you know, in, in your particular area, you know, you have higher competition or things like that. If you could charge differently, charge differently if you need to then you need to um, adjust these numbers uh, as you as need be. But the, the whole point of this handyman pricing handbook is to give you a baseline start point of where to charge and how to charge for particular handyman jobs. Um, also, a really cool thing in the back of this book is there is a pricing, um, a pricing guide of how long things typically take um, based on, um, you know, based on a typical handyman, right? So if you say like, you know, a, a kitchen faucet or a bathroom faucet, that typically takes an hour. A ceiling fan typically takes an hour. This is what I bill for it, right? A toilet, two hours. You know, there, there's different things that you want to figure out. So the question really isn't how much should I charge for this? The question should be how long does this job take, right? And this book will help you answer that question. So how long do these jobs take? And then it's a simple thing. If, if you think something's gonna take you three hours, then take your base hourly rate or your inflated hourly rate with profit and multiply that by three hours and charge that for the work that needs to be done. And also in this book, there's a lot of great information about, um, you know, mileage charge, you know, debris haul off charges, um, whether or not you should charge that. There's, there's some information in here about guys from all around the world 
some guys charge you know a uh, uh, half day rate full day rate some people charge by the hour some people charge by the job it's really cool really interesting to hear what other people from all around the world are doing in their handyman business but at the end of the day you need to make sure that your business is profitable and the only way to do that is to figure out what your expenses are and run it through this equation in the handyman pricing handbook. So I hope this answered your question. I would appreciate your guys' comments in the comment section below. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. I would love to have you stick around with me. Check out this book in the description below. We'll see you all on the next video.